Hey guys, Brooke Whipple here. Welcome to my channel. I'm all about inspiring you to get outside and get happy. And today, I'm back at our wall tent camp here in the UP of Michigan. Before we get started, I do want to thank you for all of your well wishes, all of your condolences uh, in regards to the passing of my brother. He's at peace now, and he's in heaven, and I'll see him when I get there. So thank you. There they go. There goes the geese. Nice. So today we're all about getting the outhouse in. One of the main things you got to do before you start on a big project, like a cabin build. So we're going to get started on that. We got here yesterday, enjoyed a really, really just beautiful day of just enjoying each other's company and just hanging out. I didn't film at all. So today we got up, had breakfast and we're ready to get started. So it's going to be a beautiful day. The mosquitoes are really intense here. They've calmed down right at the moment. The breeze has come up. It's getting more towards uh, noon time and they just have settled down a bit. We brought a screen tent with us this time. We're going to put that up so we've got some place to sit outside away from the mosquitoes. So I want to talk about some important aspects of building an outhouse. We've, we've used and built so many. We've come to know that there's a few secrets, a few really key details that you probably have never thought about that's really going to help the longevity of your outhouse and the experience of being in your outhouse. So stay tuned. One more thing. Today, I get to hang up my inaugural hanging of the wind chimes. It means we're here for the year. Let's do that. All right, so Dave is out digging the hole for the outhouse. We finally decided on a spot, so let's go see what he's doing. So here's the spot we decided on, and this is a country that's just full of sand. So we gotta get through the, the top soil layer, but then it's gonna be all sand. How's it so far? Lots of roots. It's actually been kind of a tough dig. Whew. I can take a turn if you're ready. Let me know. You know what you could do? Maybe rake, knock the ferns down and get this area raked down. And I'll throw, I'll bale some sand out on that. Okay. Be a little beach in front of the outhouse. <laughs> Who's got a beach in front of their outhouse? <laughs> I feel like royalty. <laughs> it's so tall. All right, so what I'm doing here is clearing out just the ferns and I'm gonna rake the ground and stuff. I'm gonna get a screen tent up right here so we can be in the shade, be out of the bugs. It's a good thing. And these, these ferns pull up really easy. I mean, these suckers will get this tall. They're just huge. Okay, let's set up that screen tent. All right, now we gotta find a flat spot for it. It's not very flat right there. Just pull it out, twist it around. You getting there, babe? Getting there. It's quite hard on the bottom. Oh yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. It's like uh, packed sand. It's not what you think it would be. I mean, feel that. Oh wow. Yeah. That's wild. Pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm well, I'll, I'll jump in there a minute. until the evening to build it just to get a good light on it it's almost like it's frozen it's kind of weird 
I mean, I know it's not, but it, that's what it, that's what it acts like. What's hard is getting the dirt out. <laughs> you sound funny. Dead. I'm like, what's well, hard? It's hard. Ah, ah, ah. I'm about to the point where I can't, can't get more dirt out. It's just too, too deep and narrow. So I think I'm about done. Well, that's pretty deep. It's like, it's right here. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's gonna have to do. The sand is nice. There it is. <laughs> Even though it's pretty oh. by the elbows. And guys, I would, I'd go up, but this guy's in his, he's in his underwear right now. <laughs> Let's do the upper half. Well, it was like 100 degrees and it's covered with sand, so. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Did it get any easier? Uh, you know, there was just that kind of hard layer and it got a little easier, yeah. Okay. But what's hard is just, you know, you you got no shovel room. You can't get it out. Right. But. That is a good, that's a good hole. Those are some legs there. They are <laughs> white as the moon, aren't they? <laughs> well, while Dave's working on cutting out pieces for the outhouse, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pull this stump out with the truck. I just found a piece of chain. I think it'll work. All right, let's see if that works. I just ripped out part of it. That's good. So I ripped out half of it. Now I think I can get a shovel under there and we can grab the rest of it. There it is. I got a hole now. Let's see. Ah, we're getting there. We're getting there. We go, I'm through. Okay. Here we go again. solid right there. This one's out. Oh, I'm so close. I think this one I'm just going to have to wrap up. Let's try that. Yes! Yes! It's out! Yay! Hot, hot. There is so much value in a piece of chain with a couple of hooks on the end. You wouldn't believe it. Good stuff.
this beautiful place and the lake. Time to go get cleaned up. Mmm, breezy. What a beautiful lake. Too bad. Daddy's getting naked. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so much better. I got a washcloth. I'm good. Ooh. Oh yeah. How do you feel now, babe? Man, I feel like a million bucks. You look good. Yeah, just a little bit of water and this breeze. There's no bugs here. That's there's no a big plus. There's no people. There's no people. No <laughs> bugs. It's wonderful. Yeah, it is. That just really felt great. That's where it was last time. All right, so Dave and I just brought over these log bottoms that he has uh, chainsawed up perfectly to fit the outhouse, and now he's he's putting it all together. We're gonna have an outhouse soon. Nice view of the woods when it's over. Here we go. So I got a fire going for Dave and me. He's still working on the outhouse, which is taking a lot longer than we thought. It's 9.30, still got some good daylight. I'm gonna roast up some hot dogs, gonna do some coney dogs for dinner and just chill. He's really close to being done with the outhouse, so it won't be long. We can just chill for the rest of the day. And I'm just gonna bathe in the smoke so that the skeeters won't get me. Been pretty brutal today. Ooh, okay, there it is. Yeah. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. It's a beautiful day, the work we got done. Thanks for this hot dog. In Jesus' name, amen. Coffee's coming. Yes.
Yeah, that does make an excellent place for horseshoes right there. Oh, that's point. Yeah, it's supposed to be sandy. They'll, they'll bounce over here. Ooh. Ooh. How far are they supposed to be apart anyway? Farther than that, I think. But. Sweet. You know. There's one. One point. One point. <laughs> That's a point. Man. Better at this than I ever knew. <laughs> as soon as we're playing, I won't even get close. Yeah. There's a ringer. Ooh. Ow. Nice. Still, that's a ringer. Nah, no leaner. Isn't a leaner too? Leaner's two. Yeah. So there's three points. Four. The, the ringer is three. Oh, okay. The leaner's two, and a point is a point. Right. But that's not touching, so it's not a leaner. Right. Nice job. I'm so glad you picked this up. That's gonna yeah. be fun. First time. First time playing horseshoes. Oh boy, in no decades. Kidding. No kidding. I'm gonna grab some more wood for Brecky Fist. Brecky Fist, it's so warm, but we don't have a Coleman stove. It's a beautiful morning. Beauty. Look at the sun. It's gonna be a hot day. So I got this joint opened up so we can have breakfast. Coffee going. Oh, beautiful coffee. This is what ruins people on camping. What? Heat Getting and bugs? Getting bed up and sweat and sack. Heat and bugs. <laughs> yeah, it's only 920. It's it's pretty warm. It's going to be a hot day. Yeah, right now everything looks pretty good. Between the thermosel and the two mosquito coils. It's working. Don't go to the end of the driveway and bag. No. So in order to sit out here this morning, we have two picks going. These are uh, like a mos burning mosquito coil. We use them in Alaska all the time. And this is something new we're trying, which is a thermocell. Yeah, so this trip we brought pick and two picks we have burning right now and a thermocell. It's bad. The mosquitoes here are really, really bad. So we're sitting out here this morning and it's, it's the only time we've been sitting still with our t-shirts on. Of course, we have bug spray on too, but got the fire going. It's been, it's been brutal and it's hot. I don't know how this is going to work very good out here today. Oh, my rubber handles. Keep our eyes peeled too for a good deal on a picnic table. Yeah, oh. A picnic table and bring it up. We need a picnic table for sure. Let's get 
toast going here. But there's hot. like suet. There's like seed fuel. Where's that hemlock gonna go when it comes down? There's no good place to file that tree. Might be lucky to get it to go to the driveway, but I don't think there's enough space. You know, I think it hit the tent. Yeah, I do too. It's hard to tell. You know, it's 40 feet away from the tent. I don't think it's a whole lot more than 40 feet tall, but it is. Oh, it's hot. Thank you. Yep. These are just pie tins, aren't they? Yeah. They're my favorite. I just love it. They're just good camp. Uh, plates, you know? Right. I'd eat out of them anytime, actually. I think they're great. I'll let my toast go a little farther. A little Tabasco. A lot of Tabasco. Oh, my Pico. It's going to go all natural on this one. Just enjoying the omelet flavor. No way. You gotta have Tabasco. So this is the time of year when I can come out here on our property and find all of the fresh tips of the spruce, the hemlock, the balsams. And it's all this bright green growth that you see here. And they're so fragrant. They're so delicious in teas. But what I'm doing today is collecting them for an infusion that I'm gonna do in jojoba oil so I can make like a roll-on perfume. Cause I just, I just wanna wear this smell. I mean, I wish you could smell it. it smells so amazing. So I'm doing hemlock, spruce, and balsam tips, those, that fresh green growth in the spring. Gonna make an amazing roll-on perfume, hopefully with it. Plus I just love foraging and collecting stuff. Balsam tips are really tiny. So to make a tea out of these, you would just take some of the tips and steep it in a pot of, of hot water. Just let it steep for five or 10 minutes and then you can just enjoy a delicious tea. They have lots of vitamin C. And when we were on Vancouver Island on uh, Alone Season 4, Dave and I ate hemlock tea for like seven straight weeks. And, and that wasn't the new growth. You, you can just take a piece of the branch off of any of these trees and steep it in water and you're gonna get the same effect. These, these beautiful spring greens are just the most delicious. So guys, check this out. You know, it is so blazing hot outside right now. It's probably mid 80s and there's not a not a lot of breeze and I'm just cooking. I and the bugs, the deer flies, the mosquitoes are driving me nuts. So I'm just going to take a break inside for a while. What's nice is I can still like do all my work stuff here in, in the wall tent, which I love. I can charge my phone, I can work on my videos, I can do all my edits right here, take a little break. And it's all because I have this power supply. It's an energizer. This thing, I love how small it is. So it's got several connectors for USBs and stuff. Here's your solar output, two three prong cords. And I can still keep working and charged even off grid, which is super cool. The other thing I love about this is um, I can hook it up to solar. Now I'm missing, I'm missing the solar connector that I need for my panel. So I've got to sort that out. That's one of the problems. You get off grid, you still have things that require power and I still need to work and still need to be connected to my family and charge camera batteries and still keep 
moving on forward. The key is finding and installing systems into your off-grid life that'll continue to let you live like you're accustomed to living, plugging stuff in the wall and, and working on a computer and, and communicating with people. So when I find a new piece of gear like this, this small power bank, um, super helpful, especially when I can use it uh, with solar. So this is what the box looks like. This is 150 watts, so it's gonna really give you enough power for a lot of things, like your phones, um, it can totally easily power your laptop, uh, recharge our batteries and all kinds of stuff. Just thought you might wanna check this out if you're camping or, or hunting or off-grid in any way, getting some kind of portable power and also something that can be charged with solar. It's totally, totally cool. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link below. The other cool thing is when you press, you press this button here, you get a light. So that might come in handy too. This, this might be something really cool just to keep in your car and uh, as an emergency power system for, uh, you know, communication devices and stuff. So guys, I wanted to give you an update on my little Energizer portable power station. I did get a cord finally that hooks up to my solar panel and it is totally doing its job. It's, this panel is a Renogy 100 watt panel and it is charging my little power station. This input here just goes in for the solar and simply connects in the back. Pretty sweet setup. I really like these Renogy panels. This is their newest one. And it's supposed to be the most efficient, has less grids in it. And so far, I'm loving it. This is the same kind of panel I use in Alaska, too. Woohoo! We got an outhouse! Whoa! He finished it! It's amazing! Oh, wow. This is so great. I mentioned earlier there's three... That's five. Three really important aspects of an outhouse that only pros, like Dave and I, would know to do to pay attention to when you're building an outhouse. So I wanna show you that right now. So here's the overall view of the outhouse. Now that he has built it, I'm going to paint it. But the thing you notice right away is how bright it is in here, and that's because of the clear roof panel. If you just put something dark in there and then you close the door, and a lot of people, maybe they're gonna put a, put a little, little uh, half moon or something in the door, it's gonna be completely dark in there. You want some natural light and look how beautiful, bright, and nice that outhouse is. Second thing is, right where you sit, right here behind this panel, Dave has put a piece of this clear panel. And the reason is, because when you're going to the bathroom, you pee forward onto that board. And in a lot of outhouses, that's what makes the outhouse reek. Over time, all that pee hitting that piece of wood just soaks in disgusting. So if you put a, either a piece of plastic, piece of the roof, something that won't absorb into the wood, it's going to make your outhouse experience much better. And the last tip. This is a big one. You don't want to put any of your paper in the hole. I know that doesn't sound right, but you want your outhouse to last as long as possible. Don't put paper in the hole. Put a paper bag inside the outhouse everybody puts their paper in the bag you take the paper bag out and you burn it it's a lot less stuff going into your hole which means it's going to last a lot longer now when it starts getting stinky you can take some ashes from your campfire pit your wood stove throw some ashes in there it'll kind of neutralize it a little bit and cover it up but keep the paper out because it ain't going anywhere and it's just going to fill up your hole quicker so this is a typical whipple outhouse this is probably the top necessity of an off-grid cabin, location, whatever, homestead. You gotta have a good outhouse. So I hope you found these tips helpful, and uh, next time I come here, I'm gonna paint it. Woohoo! Outhouse! What is still burning? Oh, Dave. bless you. Thank you for the outhouse. You're welcome. Go enjoy it. <laughs> when you said you were going to paint it, I almost said something. What? I don't know, Mexican food joke or something. You know, did you have tacos last <laughs> night? Or... It was a diarrhea joke. I had it in my head. <laughs> oh. I'm like, nah. 
I'm gonna paint it. Nice. Well, thank you. Yes. Enjoy your mill best oh, on the beach. Oh my goodness, I like the beach. Yeah. I am soaking up some beach time right here. That's right. Oh, that's the best. Yeah, it's the mill best. Oh. <laughs> For a garbage beer, it's the best with lime. You add a is. lime and it's like, ah. It is literally the best one to use with a lime. Yep. Cheers. Well guys, that's gonna do it for me. We're out of here. We're gonna run down the road, get some air. I finally changed into a tank top and shorts because now we're leaving and I won't get all bit up by the deer flies and the mosquitoes, but it was a good time. Next time, we hope to get the well punched. So see you in the next video. This girl in the woods, she gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.